Hey, hey, friends. Okay, so today's conversation is going to be a fun one. We're going to be talking all about what happens when you hear about someone else selling big or building their business in a big way using social media. And does that make you feel like you've got to do the same thing? Do you get that kind of FOMO? Does it make you want to ramp up your business? How does that impact the way you feel about the way you run your business? Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the reasons why I think this could actually be helping your business. And no, you don't have to show up in that same way, but there are some key ways that this could be impacting your business. So it's good news for you, my friends. So get excited for today's episode, and I can't wait to see what y'all think. Are you dreaming of making a long-term income and impact beyond your own efforts, but feel like you're struggling to replicate your results? I'm Heather, a former burned out boutique owner turned top network marketing leader, and I've learned the hard way that you don't have to do all the things all on your own. Now, my passion is helping social sellers scale their business by choosing faith over fear and using simple duplicatable systems without having to sell your soul to social media. I'm so excited to share with you simple tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your business to the next level. In each episode, I'll share faith-focused wisdom, proven systems that your team can duplicate, and inspiring stories from other leaders who have been right where you are today. Are you ready to grow your team, find joy and fulfillment, and feel free? Break out your favorite pen and notebook, and let's dive in. Hey friends, yay. So please forgive me for not bringing you an episode last week. I had a really cool family priority with my daughter that took up a lot of my time, but it was pretty special. She got to be a standard bearer in the Heritage Golf Tournament in Hilton Head, South Carolina. And she actually got to be the standard bearer for Jordan Spieth in his last nine holes for him to win the tournament, which was really fun. But because of that, I did not have time to record an episode last week, and I'm so sorry for that. But this is something that has been on my heart, and I'm so excited to share it because it's likely something that you have experienced yourself, but it might not be something that you've thought about. So here we go. How do you feel when you hear stories of people having crazy, massive success on social media? So that could look like either getting tons and tons of followers. Or you might know that they are bringing in tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for themselves or for their business in a given month. This can be on any platform from Instagram, TikTok, shoot, even YouTube. You hear about YouTubers making millions. (laughs) How do you feel when you hear those stories? And we'll talk about some of the different ways that might impact you. But I know how it feels to be simultaneously inspired by other people's big numbers, but also feel that sense of urgency that comes from feeling like you need to show up like they do and do all the things they're doing in order to have that same financial success. So you feel like it it lights a fire under you, but it makes you feel like you have to do more than what you're already doing or do bigger things or go faster or uh, just work harder to get there because you're seeing other people have success. I've got really great news for you. This is something I'm experiencing as, for example, our company takes off on social media and is going viral as a unique way of applying your makeup and a unique and fast way for applying your makeup. I'm seeing two things. One, I'm seeing some girls that are totally selling big, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of makeup in one month because of this. But the best news is that's actually helping not only my business, but the business of some of those or lots of those who are on my team because it's getting the word out. So someone else going viral, someone else selling big actually helps your business. And I'm going to argue that it could be one of the biggest ways that your business is exploding right now without you having to be the one to sell your soul or be a slave to social media. So their success is not only something to be celebrated because rising tides raise all chips. So you know that I'm not here to tell someone whether they should or should not be on social media. I'm just here to start the conversation for those of us who don't want to live that lifestyle and don't like that feeling of having to hustle harder or go faster or do more or again, sell your soul to social media. So the good news is those big success, those big numbers that people are having actually could be helping you in your business. 
So I'm going to use a very specific example. So there was a gal on a, the big team that I'm a part of that sold $130,000 worth of makeup last month, which is like mind blowing. It was a team record, unreal. And of course, everyone immediately starts Googling, like searching on all the different platforms. What did she do to do that? How did she achieve that? Like we're all in awe. It really is. That's an amazing feat, right? But ultimately your, your brain goes to thinking like, should I be doing what she did? It turns out, little spoiler alert, she is a comedian level anesthesiologist who went viral on TikTok. So essentially she's hilarious. She, gosh, you should totally, I probably should link to her account here so you can go, you can go watch it and contribute to her viral success. She's so funny, right? And she just did her makeup while pumping her breasts and in <laughs> her scrubs. And she's just really funny. And it was awesome. And a bunch of people wanted to try the makeup, which was really great. But what I want to ask you is, could anyone do what she did? Would anyone be able to have that same success? And sure, some might, but for most of us, for probably 99%, it's highly unlikely because you might not have that same comedian level personality, right? Or um, you might not want to pump on a social media platform while you're at work or taking a break from work. But do all 7 million people who saw that video want to try that makeup after seeing a busy working mom do her makeup on the go in her scrubs? Yes, they sure do. So here's my next question. Who are they going to want to buy it from? Now, some people, obviously a lot of people in this case, are going to click the link to be color matched or they may reach out or connect with this gal to, to purchase the makeup. But if they know someone that's already built a level of trust, a relationship, a friend, a coworker, maybe they're a nurse themselves and it's a nurse they work with at the hospital, if they know that they are selling the same product, then that's who they're going to want to buy it from. So they're going to buy it from the person that they have built that relationship with. And the good news is, if you're following everything that I'm teaching on this podcast, that my friend is you because you are centered less on trying to build a big following, trying to focus less on the quantity of the people that you're connecting with and focus more on the quality of the individual relationships that you've already built and looking to continue to build, look for opportunities to build more relationships on that level. So this is why I feel really strongly and actually really excited about when I see big numbers like this, because it's a tremendous opportunity for us. For me, when I talk about someone maybe that I just meet at the golf tournament last week, they ask me what I do. And I say, oh, I share makeup. I sat next to a lady on the bleachers as we were watching the golfers come through putting. And she naturally just the conversation led to what it was that I do. And I actually had my clutch with my makeup with her and could show her exactly what it looks like. And it's a powerful way to start the conversation. And I don't think in that particular instance this happened, but I, it has happened more than once to me recently where someone says something like, oh my gosh, that's the makeup that I've seen on TikTok. I actually saw someone comment that on one of my, my teammates' recent posts in her VIP Facebook group. They said, oh my gosh, I just saw this on TikTok. Tell me more about it. I'd love to be color matched, right? So I want you to adjust your thinking or your mindset away from comparing yourself because you're looking at it probably from one or more ways, right? Like you're either feeling like your sales, whatever that was last month or what your business did isn't good enough, which in that case, I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you, there's always going to be someone who has more, right? There's always going to be someone with more followers, someone who's a better golfer, someone who has higher sales, someone who's just better. And that's okay. That's a good thing because, again, there's lessons that we can learn from them. But even better, if you say you are a fashion designer or you're starting a boutique and there's a particular trend out there that is just going wild, that online influencer that is putting herself out there is helping your business because she's the one kind of getting the word out. And it is like a powerful business model for brands to partner with influencers in a way to get their get their brand out there. But it can help you who you're trying to build a residual passive income without having to show up like that social media influencer. But if the product that she's sharing is going viral or going wild, then guess what? You will be able to take advantage of the fruit of that without having to do that yourself. How can you leverage this? Like, how can 
you make sure that you're able to take advantage of this without having to show up on social media. And the big thing is you you still have to communicate with your network. You still have to communicate with your audience and do it regularly because if people don't know, they don't know. If they don't know the latest promotion or your latest product or maybe you've told them once, you're going to have to tell someone seven times on average before it kind of sinks in for them to actually make a purchase. So you should be communicating with your network in ways outside of social media so that they know when they see something out there that you are the person that they can go and support. They know that you are open for business. How do you do that without social media? First of all, if you are still actively using your social media, which what I mean by that is you might not necessarily want to be showing up as an influencer, posting every day, doing multiple reels, sharing your entire life and your stories, but you still spend 15, maybe 30 minutes a day hopping on Facebook or hopping on Instagram, just checking out what your friends are doing, cheering them on you. And I have a confession to make for you guys. And I just want to put it out here because I had this conversation with my husband when I first started this podcast. He said something along the lines of, so are you just never going to post on social media again? And I said, no, I would see if we go on vacation or we, it was right before our, our Costa Rica trip where we were going to catch sailfish. And I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing your, a little bit of your life on social media. So yeah, I can see myself posting here and there again. And he said, I think that's going to be very confusing to the listeners of your podcast if you are continuing to post on social media. And so I thought, you know what, you're right, at least because I am doing this as an experiment to see how my business is going, which I'm going to do an entire episode soon updating you guys on what it looks like. But let me just say it's amazing. It feels great. The results of my business are awesome. I'm actually this month having one of the best months that I have had in a while. And people are coming out of the woodwork. It's crazy. A lot of them referrals. But again, we'll get to that in a future episode. But I have to be honest with you about something. I do still occasionally hop on to social media. Not to get lost in the scroll because I don't feel addicted to it anymore, but I certainly haven't deleted my accounts. I do still leverage certain groups for business in terms of a consumption. So an example would be this podcast. I just wrapped up an incredible podcast coaching uh, with a group on Facebook, and that was where the training and homework and all the things were to be posted. And so I would take time throughout the day just here and there. I, actually, I should check my stats. What was what episode was that where that was your homework where you go and you check your screen time stats? But I can promise you it's not much. Less than 30 minutes a day, probably less than 10. And most days I actually don't ever even go on either of the platforms. But my confession to you is I do still go on social media. I do still see things. I will still comment and engage here and there, especially if it's something that is is near and dear to my heart. However, I do still miss a lot. I actually miss that one of my close friends and, and business partners is going through a really scary medical trial right now. And thank the Lord, one of our mutual business partners sent me a message letting me know, which thank you, thank you, because I will miss things because of not being active on Facebook. But I am still on there here and there. So if that is you and you are still consuming on social media, or maybe you are promoting your life in other ways, so maybe you are posting your vacation pictures or you're posting your kids and pictures of your everyday life. In that case, if you aren't looking to completely remove social media from your life, then I would say posting a strategic, thought out post on your personal feed about your business can go so far. So my one of my gals that I'm going to be interviewing and sharing her story on the podcast here very soon, Tammy Williams, she calls it high value real estate. That's what your personal social media feed is. And a lot of people think when they start a business, they've got to start a whole entire separate Instagram or a separate business page. And she's, nope, not doing that. I'm going to, but I am going to keep my existing page. But she rarely posts about her business on social media. But when she does, she makes it count. So if it's been a while since you've posted, and maybe that's out of fear of what your followers think, or again, understandably, you're not necessarily looking to leverage social media to build your business. But if you're still using it and you're still consuming it and not necessarily engaging or giving back to the platform or leveraging it in a very small and strategic way, maybe once a month, then I encourage you to do that. I know that sounds crazy coming from a podcast telling you to scale without social, but if you can get one really strategic post out there just to update the community that you've already connected with, 
do it, girl. That's a great way to show that you are open for business and you are the person that they can come to. And people will be very excited to hear from you and to know that. And likely it will create a little surge in your business. That's your first step if you want to grow without without social media is just be strategic about what you do post. So you can also, if it's been a while, going live is another way to do it. I'm just kind of updating people to give them a little taste of what's been going on. Maybe posting a testimonial from one of your customers is a great way. But always make sure when you do this, make it count and always include a call to action, a very clear one with what they can do to contact you to learn more. So it might be you guys hear me say that, for example, if you wanted to be color matched for my makeup, you could text the word color match to 912-405-8912. And so that's a perfect call to action where I'm telling you, if you wanted to try a new makeup routine, exactly what you could do to take that next step. So it could be comment color match or shoot me a message. Just make sure that you make it count if you're going to do it. And don't feel like you have to do that very often. Seriously, once a month will get the job done. And I'll be curious to see what kind of response you get from that. Now, uh, number two, if you are on the other side and you don't even have Facebook or you just deleted your Instagram, maybe this podcast inspired you to do that. And now you're like, Heather, what do I do? Help me. Oh my gosh. Like, how am I supposed to get the word out? I want you to, even if it's small, because remember, there's always going to be someone with a bigger email list or more customers or bigger sales, but starting right from where you are. I would encourage you to send a mass email. So make it look very professional if you send it. Don't send like a regular Gmail email and copy everybody to where they they can see it. I'm saying like go use an app like Flowdesk is amazing. It's one of my favorite affordable ways to put together a beautiful email marketing campaign where you can in just minutes create something really pretty. You can import a spreadsheet or a list of the email addresses that you have. Like for our company, for example, you can actually export a CSV file of all of the customers and upload it into that that platform or that software because they have signed up to receive emails from corporate, from you when when they submitted their information. So you can shoot and send them an email. If you don't have that option, just start with what you do have, right? With the emails and the contacts that you do have. But sending a really beautiful, really professional email, just almost think of it as a newsletter, right? Like you're letting your customers or your family, your friends know about what it is that you have to offer, what it is that you have to share and communicating that to them via email, once again, with a strong call to action. So click here, click this button right here to be color matched. That's a perfect example of doing that. You can also leverage a text campaign. So something like Project Broadcast or Text Magic is one that I have used in the past. They are both amazing because it's the same thing. You can upload the phone numbers of the people that have agreed to receive contact information from you. So that's your existing customers, right? You can also include your close family and friends and and that sort of a thing. And you can send them a text message where you can actually import that same spreadsheet where you can put their first name, their last name, maybe a little bit more information in there. And you can say, hi, Heather, I just wanted to let you know that we've got this amazing new product out that I think you might really love. Respond back with Color Match if you would be interested in trying it, right? And it's a way that you can have a business number that is dedicated for your business, which is going to increase that level of professionalism for you. But you're communicating in a very fast, very simple, very scalable way, because this is also something that down the road, as you grow and scale, you could delegate it to a virtual assistant, or you could even have your teenager help you with something like this. But it's a way that you can quickly and easily communicate with people where they are anyway, which is their email inbox and their phone. And by gathering these two data points, so the phone numbers and the emails for the customers from this point moving forward, if you haven't already, or just by leveraging it, if you have been smart to gather that information so far, those are contacts that you own, right? Like your social media followers, your your Facebook friends, you don't own those. They Those platforms could disappear tomorrow. And all of those points of contact would go away. <laughs> and so for that reason, you want to be smart about how you're collecting this data so that you as the business owner can use it for you, right? Not use it for Facebook or use it for social media. So 
Let's get to this week's homework. I love to leave you with some tangible steps that are relevant to the conversation that we're talking about today. And the first piece of homework is going to be for you to bust out a little notebook. And I want you to brainstorm because all of our businesses are different, right? So my business is going to look different than yours. But I want you to think about how can you show your network that you're open for business so that when they see someone else talking about whatever product it is that you share that they just have to have, that they know that they can come to you for that. So what are some ways that you can communicate outside of media and you specifically? So again, for me, since I might be consuming here and there, you may see me comment. You might see me pop in and creeping on your stories. I'm just saying. I want to be honest with you guys. But for me, I'm not building my business on social media, right? So I'm not currently posting on social media. So that isn't a way that I can relevantly communicate with my network or with my, my customers. So for me, that's my email list and my text campaign. So brainstorm what it is for you, given your circumstances, given the list that you've already developed. What can you do to show your network, meaning the people you've already connected with, the relationships you've already built? How can you show them that you are the person they can come to for this product that's blowing up online? And then number two, connect with your community and let them know the latest updates in your business. And if you don't have a, the latest update, come up with something. Communicate something fun and exciting. Launch a new product. Let this be your motivation to put something new out there. I'm so excited because we actually have a wonderful, this never ever happens in our company, but this Friday, April 22nd, we actually have an incentive for anyone who joins as a distributor in our business. They actually get a free palette for their makeup, and they also get a free ticket to our virtual conference, which is happening on Saturday, May 14th for our business. So it's an incredible way for them to get their business started with success. But if I'm not communicating that to my existing customers or right now, hello, I'm using this podcast to tell any of you guys that might be interested in starting a business based around an amazing makeup product that is blowing up on social media. And that might be you. And if it is, girl, I want to hear from it. You can actually text the word artist to 912 405-8912 and you'll automatically get an email with a little bit more information about how it works. But this Friday through the next three weeks, anyone who enrolls as what we call an artist, which is just a distributor in my company or in the business model, they will get that free compact and they're also going to get that ticket. So this is something, again, that I need to let my customers know about. This is a perfect opportunity for me to do it. So I encourage you to do the same. And if you have the ability to create something for yourself, go for it, girl. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this maybe helps to shift your perspective for seeing other people win big and taking that desire, that sense of urgency that makes you feel like you've got to do it too, right? Because you don't. I'm telling you, you don't. But instead, channel it into an opportunity that you can leverage that for your own business. So I hope this was helpful. And as always, you can text the word podcast to that same number, 912-405-8912. And you're going to get a link to the Scale Without Social for Female Entrepreneurs community over on Telegram. And that's a great way to connect with other entrepreneurs where you can brainstorm ideas, um, especially for that homework piece, number one. So head on over there, give me an update, and I hope all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your time with me today. Feel free to check out heatherkburge.com for all the scoop on all the things. Also, I've got a huge favor. If you found any value from today's episode, would you mind leaving me a quick review? Or even better, share with a friend by clicking those three little dots at the bottom of your screen. Sending you big hugs.